This is a review of the Ibanez TMB35 five-string short-scale bass. This video, I go over a lot of details on this particular bass, a lot of information in this video, but first I know the main thing that you're wondering is how does it sound? So let's hear how it sounds. So why a short scale bass? Well, number one, it's easier to play. And since it's easier to play, that means it's pretty fun to play. And also, is since it's easier to play, that means it's easier on your hands. It's not as stressful on your hands, which means that you can play it for a longer period of time, especially when you're practicing. If you normally can play an hour on a full size bass, you might be able to play an hour and a half or two hours on a short scale. Obviously your results will vary. But I find that uh, this bass, I can play a lot longer on it. That was one of the reasons for me getting a short scale bass. I felt like I had limited practice time with a full size bass since my hands would tire out quicker, especially when you're in these first five frets of the instrument. Since this is shorter, these frets are a lot closer to you than on a longer scale bass. They'd be even further out and that stretch and that angle a little bit more awkward on your, on your body than if you're a little closer here. So that's one of the main reasons right there is it's just easier to play and that makes it fun. Second reason for a short scale bass is the weight. I've been wanting a bass that is lighter than my full size basses. 
uh, which tend to be in the nine and a half to ten and a half pound range. Uh, years of playing, bases hanging on your left shoulder. You feel it after a while. So I wanted something a little lighter. This base comes in right at around eight pounds. And so that means it's a little easier on your back and it's a little easier also to carry around instead of carrying around a, a base in a uh, full-size base like, uh, like this in a, in a hard case instead. I just carry this lighter base around in a soft bag. A lot easier to deal with, a lot easier on my back. Third reason for a short scale base is it makes a great beater base. I didn't want to always have to carry around my more expensive bases to rehearsals, especially when I travel first to work. I've got to take my base with me to work because I go directly to rehearsal right after work. And so carrying this, you know, base around everywhere you go all day long, kind of a pain. Um, also, my full-size bases are in hard cases, so that uh, adds to the weight, that adds to the bulk, um, less convenient to carry, you know, carrying a hard case around. Where this is just a little cheap beater base, it's smaller, I can fit it into a, uh, just a soft bag and take it with me, a little gig bag, and it's a lot easier. I don't have to worry about it as much, a lot lighter, the gig bag versus the hard case, a lot lighter, the base versus the full-size base, a lot lighter, so overall, it's just an easier base to deal with when carrying around. Now, you might think because it's a beater base, it's not very good. Well, this is actually really, I'm really impressed with this base because I, I got this base not having too high expectations for it. When you're paying 250 bucks for a base, you're thinking, well, this isn't probably going to be that great, but it far exceeds those expectations that I had for it. I'm very happy with it. Now, is this base as good as say a Music Man Stingray? <laughs> no, not at all. And there's plenty of other bases that are much better than this base, much better. But for 250 bucks, I don't think you will find a better base in this price range or even in a more expensive price range. For, also for a short scale base, I mean, come on, it's 250 bucks and it's fun as heck to play. Now I've got nicer bases and they are nicer and there is a difference, but I gotta tell you, I'm playing this bass more often than I'm playing any of my other bases and I'm really enjoying it. So it's worth it. One of the cool things about this bass is it, it's a short scale, but also it has five strings on it, which is rare to find on a, on a short scale bass, unless you're paying a lot more money for a short scale bass. Now, there's really not much competition for this bass, at least at the time this video is being produced. There's the only other five, uh, five string short scale bass under 500 bucks that I can think of is another Ibanez bass, which is the uh, Micro Series. They've got a, a five uh, string short scale bass, the uh, Micro for, I think it's 199 right now is the uh, retail price on that particular bass. So it's actually cheaper than this bass. However, I did go with this bass because I felt like it would be a better match for me, a better fit. Um, it felt like the neck might be a little bit bigger, um, which I like, and the, uh, also the uh, PJ pickup configuration I thought I would like more than, than the uh, pickup configuration on the Micro. Um, so uh, yeah, <laughs> the only competitor is for, for this Ibanez base is another Ibanez base, so there's not much out there. Um, so you, if you're really looking for a five scale, short scale, short scale, five string short scale base, this is really the, uh, one of the best options out there, if not one of the only, uh, but you'll be really pleased with this base, especially if you like that uh, PJ uh, pickup configuration, uh, you'll feel right at home with it. Also, if you like a jazz bass neck, um, or actually this kind of feels more like a, a combination jazz uh, precision because it's it feels a little chunky but it also feels like it flattens out nicely as you go up the neck i know that's kind of hard to explain and it probably doesn't make any sense but it it feels a little nice and bulky in your hand without being too bulky while also feeling as you kind of transition up the neck um, it kind of feels like it pancakes out a little bit which is kind of the way my my jazz bass feels so uh, it's a very comfortable base, really easy to, uh, to adapt to, and it transitions really nicely 
to a full-size base. I can play this and practice on it. Switch over to the full-size base, and it doesn't feel that much different at all. So um, it's a great transition. Okay, so like I said, it's got a PJ pickup configuration, and uh, if I was going to use this playing out, I probably at some point would uh, put in, I would upgrade the pickups. Actually, I've already played this bass in four services at my church. It's done great, done a great job, um, but I can, me personally, I can notice the difference between this and my other basses, but I'm still very happy with how it performs live. I've, I'm very impressed, actually, for the price range. But uh, eventually, if I continue to use it live, I would, I would upgrade the uh, pickups. I'd also upgrade the electronics in it. And, um, but overall, like I said, it's pretty solid and uh, great for a beginner bass and also a great bass for somebody who's experienced and, and just wants a second bass to play or a backup bass or what have you. Um, other nice things about it, the tuners are solid that come with it and the, uh, the body shape, while it looks a little, I don't know, I had a hard time getting used to it as a bass. Oddly enough, I used to own a Talman guitar back in the 90s and I thought it was a really cool kind of retro design to it. But on a bass, I've just never gotten used to it until I've gotten this bass. Um, there's just something I think about the, uh, the headstock on it that just looks a little weird to me. It just looks oversized for the bass. And uh, the tuners on it just look so ginormous on it for the, it just kind of this section of the bass has always looked a little out of proportion for it on a bass. So it's been a little hard for me to get used to it. But the overall, the it's, I'm actually, it's growing on me. And so I'm liking it. One thing that's nice is the, the uh, lower bout here, um, since it doesn't kind of wrap out like a, like a horn on a lot of guitars, it's a little easier to access these upper frets without the, uh, the horn here kind of getting in your way like it would on a jazz bass or on a precision. So it's easier to access these upper frets. So that's kind of a nice thing. Um, however, since the upper horn here, I don't know, horn, bout, however, whatever you want to call it, since it's a little bit, seems a little bit shorter, um, although it pretty much kind of lines up over the, uh, the 12 fret there, um, but that combined with this uh, large neck, it is pretty neck dive. Uh, prone. It, it Actually, it does. It neck dives, so that's something to, know, to be aware of on this particular bass. Um, but overall, the, the fret work on it is, is quite good. Um, I'm really impressed with the, uh, the fret work on it. Um, no sharp edges or anything like that on it. Everything's nicely uh, rounded or filed down. Um, so it's just a it's just a great playing bass. I mean, there's no dead spots on it either. Um, so that's something that's really nice. I mean, I can play every note on this bass and I'm not gonna get any ringing or anything else. It just, it plays really nice. I've been very happy with the, uh, with the, uh, the way the bass plays. So I think you will be too. Okay, so what are some of the issues of this bass? Well, the neck dive, that is definitely uh, one of the main issues of the bass. If there's one thing I could correct on this bass, it would be the neck dive. I mean, see, I just kind of, you know, it doesn't sit on my leg at all. I let this thing go and it just wants to dive to the floor there. Um, so that is an issue, again, because of this monstrous head stock on it with these giant uh, tuners um, that really makes it want to dive to the floor. So maybe you could put on some lighter tuners if you were going to upgrade it, um, that might help out. Um, so, but overall, yeah, neck dive, that's an issue. Okay, issue number two on this bass is on the, uh, the nut here, um, it's actually, and this is probably a fixable issue, I'm sure, um, but it's really sharp here on these edges. I mean, the frets are really smooth and nice, nothing sharp there, but once you come up here and you come against this nut, especially when you're going to play 
say the F note or any other note on this first uh, fret and you come up against it or you're, you play and then you kind of slide off of a note and you, you know, it, right here where it's hitting my finger, it's like, ooh, that's sharp. So you, uh, I would assume you'd be able to, uh, to file that down and smoothen that off, but that's something to be aware of on this bass. It's a little sharp right there. Third issue on this bass is the strings. Now, actually, I've kind of warmed up more to it now that I've been playing the bass for a while, but um, uh, the strings, I haven't quite adjusted to them, and I don't know if it's the strings that came with the bass or if it also has to deal with the, uh, just the fact that it's a short scale bass, the string tension is gonna feel a little different, the, uh, the size of the strings. And to be honest, I haven't put a lot of uh, looking around at short scale strings to find out what uh, I might wanna put on it in the future. All my other basses have Ernie Ball slinkies on them. That's kind of my bass string of choice. And there are short string uh, slinkies, but I, I haven't found any five string slinkies for short scale, so I might be having to look for something else in the meantime. Um, so I haven't really, I haven't put anything else on it. What strings I've got on it now are from the factory, whatever those are. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to do some experimenting to find a string that I'm really, I'm really happy with. But overall, these, the ones that are on it are, are doing a good job. It's just, uh, I haven't quite I don't think I've found exactly the string that uh, I would use for it going forward. Okay, the fourth issue I would say on this bass would be the knobs. They are not very linear when you turn the knob. Instead of it, you would expect turning the knob, you would have a smooth up or down with the volume as you turn the knob, but instead on these, you, it kind of ramps up and then kind of levels off a little bit more. So it's hard to get smooth changes in volume. And the same would be on the tone knob. It seems like it, just a little bit up and then it, it really starts brightening up and then it kind of levels off a bit more. So uh, having something that's more smoothly linear would be nice and you're not gonna get that on this bass stock as it comes. So something to think about. Okay, so the fifth issue on this bass, I would say, and I'm not really sure it's an issue, it's just getting used to it, would be the, the input jack, which is completely different than most other guitars. It's more like a Stratocaster type of input where it's kind of 45 degree angled into the uh, bass. Um, no big deal there. Um, it actually works quite fine, and when you have it on a strap and you kind of tuck it in like this, or like you normally would do, it actually works really nice. Um, it's just... I guess it's just getting different, getting getting different, getting used to the difference of how it how it plugs in. And I usually used to always use the the 45 degree plug on my bases that plug in like this or straight into the body like this. And so now um, carrying one bass cord around for my bass is suddenly um, kind of awkward. Now I'm using it to plug into the amp or into the uh, direct box or or the preamp from that end instead of into the guitar. So anyway, just something to get used to. It's a little different, but uh, it's really not an issue. All right, so the sixth issue with the bass would be the color. I mean, look at it. That's like toothpaste green. Don't believe me? Toothpaste green right here. There you go, toothpaste green. Eh, close. But uh, I think I'm gonna call this, this, uh, this base, the, uh, the base color on it, Sensodyne Green. But honestly, the, uh, the color is, is not uh, that bad once you start getting used to it. And ironically, I get more compliments on the color of this base than any other base that I have, which really quite surprises me. But I've had probably, at least 10 people say to me, oh, I really love the color of that bass. Oh, that bass is awesome, it looks so cool. I'm, I'm speechless, I had no idea because that was one of the main things that kind of kept me from pulling the trigger on buying this bass for a little while. It's just like, oh, I just wish they had a better color than that toothpaste green. Um, but go figure, people uh, really seem to like it. Um, but yeah, I would, I would uh, ideally pick something different. 
So issue number seven would be the B string. How about that B string? It's a five string short scale. We, everybody wants to know what's the B string like. Well, it, it does a good job, um, but it's not fantastic. So that's why I'm calling it an issue. It's not really an issue. It's just, yeah, it could be better because it's a short scale with a B, a B string on it. So, you know, it has its limitations, but um, it's solid. Um, and for a, a beater bass, for a rehearsal bass, for a practice bass, perfectly fine for that, for, for performances where you're playing live. Yeah, you could use a better bass for the B string. I don't play a lot on the B string when I'm playing live. Um, most of the time, some songs I do, and in that case, I wouldn't ideally want to take this bass with me to that, that performance or that church service. Um, but for, uh, for most day-to-day -day stuff, it does fine. Um, but yeah, if you're using your B string a lot, you'll, you'll, you'll want to have something a little bit better. But for day-to-day -day stuff, just general use, um, yeah, it works fine. Um, again, studio recording too, probably not ideal. I might pick something else for the B string, but again, it actually does a very decent job. It's just not the best out there. I would, actually, I would actually say that my Fender Jazz bass is probably not much better. Um, when I first got this bass, I actually thought, wow, this B string is actually pretty good because it was so much better than my expectations. And I actually thought, yeah, it's probably about as good as the uh, B string on my Fender Jazz, which isn't saying a lot. I love that bass, but the B string's always been a weak area of, of that bass. Um, so I would say it's probably about as good almost as my Fender five string American jazz. Um, but yeah, um, but not quite. Um, so if that tells you anything. Okay. So I've used this bass in church services, uh, and the first time I took it to rehearsal and uh, played it, I'm, usually my, my drummer is always a good judge of whether or not the, uh, the bass is going to work for, uh, for a service. And after playing this in rehearsal, the first thing he said to me was, ain't nothing wrong with that bass. So I would say that it, it got the drummer seal of approval. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a great bass so far. I've had it for about a month now and uh, really enjoying playing it. Like I said, it's a blast to play. It's a lot of fun. If you've never, never experimented with a short scale bass, then this is definitely the, uh, the one to get in my opinion right now, because just the price is so incredibly low on it. Um, I would have loved to have had a, a Mustang bass, a Fender Mustang. They're a little bit more expensive and they only come in four strings and I'm a five string player. So I uh, wanted to, uh, to, to have a five string so that I could transition between the, the five string short scale and the five string full size and uh, not have to worry about that loss of string. And so this has just been a really great bass and uh, happy with it. So I think uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely a good buy. It's great value. So way to go, Ibanez. I approve. If you're gonna have a beater bass, then you need to have a beater case for it. So this is my gig bag that I use for the bass that I bought with it. Now with uh, short scales, there's, uh, there's not as many options as far as cases go. And so um, there wasn't a lot available since I bought the bass from Sweetwater. There was two uh, cases that were available online from Sweetwater that I could order at the same time that were available. One was by Fender, and then there was this one by G&L. You see the logo on there. Um, so even though the base is not a GNL base, um, this uh, is just kind of a generic case that they, they offer. <clears throat> the reason why I went with this one over the Fender case was because it's, at least in the pictures, it looks wider up top here, which I'm guessing since the Fender, uh, they're assuming you're gonna buy a, uh, or use it for a Mustang base, and the Mustang only has the tuners on one side, so they don't need as wide of a headstock uh, section or whatever you want to call it for the case, whereas this Talman base has tuners on both sides. So I thought this probably has a little bit more room for the larger headstock. Um, so it works well, it fits well. Um, there we go. And so as far as the rest of the case, it's got a pretty generous uh, pack here for putting stuff. You kind of got a main case here. Uh, or I got straps, I got my cord, 
And then it also has another pocket on top of that, which is conveniently sized for my iPod, which I use with Planning Center for all the core charts. And then my in-ears in a separate pocket here. So it's got a total of three pockets, the large main pocket, the next size pocket on top of that, that's big enough for an iPad, and then the smaller pocket on top of that, which is good for smaller things like in-ear monitors. And so uh, there's still plenty of room. I got the, like I said, I've got my, my strap and my cord in the main pocket, and there's still, there's still room in there for, for more stuff too. So anyway, I just wanted to point out this case. It also has a handle on the back for carrying it, although I kind of think that this handle's a little bit too high up to really be too convenient. <clears throat> has the uh, regular handle here, which of course you'll use a lot. Then it also has the two backpack straps here on the back, which I never use because I'm only carrying it from the car to inside the house or from my car to inside church when I take it there. I might slip it over my back like that, just on one strap, kind of wear it like, you know, well, like that. <laughs> Only thing you got to watch out is this will bump in the stuff. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, you think it's a short scale base and it's not going to stick out much, but as you can see, it definitely does. So uh, doorways, when you're going in the doorways or anything like that, or just anything else that's in this area, you got to watch out or you're going to bump into it. So, but otherwise, the case works fine and it was only like $59. So if you're looking to get a case with your Ibanez TMB35, then the uh, GNL short scale case is, in my opinion, is a, a, good, a good case. It's got padding on it. It's not like super thick or anything, but again, this is, to me, this is a, a beater base, so I wasn't looking for something too padded. I think it's plenty enough for, for just day-to-day -day travel and, like I said, using for a beater base. One other thing I wanted to mention about this base and this review is I ordered it from Sweetwater. Now there's a lot of good reputable companies out there to buy your base from. If you can buy it in person at your local music store, I highly uh, recommend that. But if you don't have access to this base and you wanted to purchase it, um, Sweetwater is definitely one option that you can do. And I can only speak from my own experience, so that's why I'm talking about my order from Sweetwater. Um, but the base did come set up really well. Um, I didn't do anything to this base after I unpacked it. I hardly even had to tune it. It was almost perfectly in tune when I took it out of the box. Uh, the fretwork, everything was really good. The, the setup on it, perfect. Usually you've got to get a professional setup after you get an instrument to really get it playing well or you've got to know what you're doing and, and do the adjustments yourself. Haven't touched anything on the setup of this bass since I've got it and it plays great. Um, also wanted to show you, um, just so you would know if you're thinking about buying it from a company like Sweetwater, um, this is the box that it came in. And I know a lot of people like doing the unboxings as part of their video. I wasn't gonna wait for that. I, <laughs> I immediately unboxed it when I got it, but I just wanted to show you how the, because a lot of, you know, when you buy an instrument and especially when you don't have a case with it, it's easy to think, well, what's, how's it gonna be shipped? Is it gonna get broken? And I know there's a lot of concern about that because I had that same concern. This first instrument, uh, guitar instrument that I've purchased uh, via, via the internet without actually, you know, actually playing the instrument beforehand. So this is the, uh, there's two of these in the, in the box. So this is the large box right here. As you can see, this is a pretty big box for a short scale bass. But each end has this styrofoam end piece and then on the uh, inside the big box is the actual box for the instrument itself that it comes in. So as you can see, this box uh, is kind of sitting whatever in between with these styrofoam end pieces. So it's a box inside of a box. And then when you open this, That's base comes wrapped in this. As you can see, there's a bunch of styrofoam pieces around to kind of keep it stable, uh, especially right here for the neck. So it's got a lot of lot of packaging in it. 
kind of hold it firm and still. So, oh, hey, look, I didn't even know that was in there. Ah, Allen wrenches, <laughs> cool. All right, um, see if there's anything else I didn't, I didn't catch when I opened it up. I guess that's it. Okay, so as you can see, the, the boxing, it's, it's, it came very, I mean, no problems at all when I got it. So I really feel like the packaging is completely safe for the instrument. I don't think you should have any concerns in that regard at all. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you.